In the previous section, we studied steady-state thermal analysis, where the temperature distribution remains unchanged with time. In this lecture, we'll be talking about the transient thermal analysis. We see the change in temperature with time in day-to-day -day life. For example, think of how much time does it take for the hot coffee mug to cool down? Or how much time do you have to shape this molten glass? Transient thermal analysis determine temperatures and other temperature quantities that vary over time. The variation of temperature distribution over time is of interest in many applications, ranging from the cooling of electronic packages to quenching of metals for heat treatment. Also, temperature distribution may generate thermal strains that can lead to failure. In such cases, the temperature from transient thermal analysis can be used as input to structural analysis for thermal stress evaluations. Many heat transfer applications, such as heat treatment problems, electronic package design, nozzles, engine blocks, pressure vessels, fluid structural interaction problems, and so on, involve transient thermal analysis. So, how do we find the governing equation for transient thermal problem? Let us first investigate the thermodynamics of energy conservation. Consider a block of thickness delta x, where heat transfer takes place by conduction across the block faces. At a given time, heat can enter the system via heat flux, conduction, and internal heat generation. At the same time, heat also leaves the system through boundary conditions. Moreover, heat is storing in the material by increasing the temperature inside the volume. According to the first law of thermodynamics, the heat entering the block equals the heat leaving the block plus the heat stored in the block. Based on this principle, one can derive this governing equation of heat flow. The meaning of the symbols is listed here. Note that the first term represents the net rate of heat conduction into the volume. The second term represents the rate of heat generation inside the volume. And the last term is the rate of energy storage inside the volume. The presence of variable T indicates that the temperature changes with time, and this is a transient phenomenon. And this term differentiates the transient state from the steady state. A transient thermal analysis involves heat boundary conditions that are functions of time. The first step in applying transient thermal laws is to establish initial temperature distribution at time equals zero. Initial temperature do not matter in steady state analysis, but are very important in transient. Initial temperatures can affect your final temperature if you don't have a steady state condition. Let's say you put hot water in a pot and heat it on the stove for two minutes. Compare that with taking ice cold water in the pot and that is heated on the same stove for the same amount of time. You will get different temperatures after two minutes, since the initial temperature of water is different. However, if you leave the pot on the stove for a long time, both situations will lead to the water boiling, which is the same temperature. In this case, we say they both reach a steady state condition. Thus, initial temperatures are important when transient effects are important. But once we reach a steady state condition, then you can end up with similar results. Coming to the transient term in governing equation, we see the product of density and specific heat. Specific heat is the amount of energy we need to add to a unit mass of a substance to raise its temperature by one unit. The product of density and specific heat is the thermal capacitance per unit volume, which indicates the ability of a unit volume body to store thermal energy. The larger the mass and specific heat are, the more thermal energy a body will be able to store. In numerical solver, we solve the governing equation in matrix form instead of the differential form. In the matrix form of heat equation, where the uppercase C is the thermal capacitance matrix, containing information of density and specific heat of the problem. More information of thermal capacitance and specific heat will be covered in the following lesson. A body with larger thermal capacitance will take more time to heat. This is analogous to the inertia of a structure seen in structural analysis. A body with larger mass offers larger resistance to motion. Because of this analogy, thermal capacitance is also called thermal mass. 
The concept of thermal mass is used in building designs to improve the comfortability of the place by reducing the temperature fluctuations. Let's see how an electric analogy can be drawn for a transient thermal analysis. Recall in the steady state thermal analysis lesson, the thermal resistance is inversely proportional to the thermal conductivity, and this thermal resistance is analogous to electrical resistance. Similarly, in transient analysis, we can relate the thermal capacitance to electrical capacitance, which represents the storage of electrical charge. Consider an enclosure surrounded by walls of thermal resistance R. The thermal capacitance of the enclosure is C. Heat flows with rate Q via conduction into the enclosure. The temperature inside the enclosure is T sub E, and the ambient temperature is T sub A. Based on these details, we can draw an electric circuit for this problem and represent heat rate Q as the current source, R as the electrical resistance, C as the capacitance, and T A T E represent the voltage across the capacitor. While these structural and electrical analogies are not required to understand heat transfer, they do remind us of strong similarities between different physics. Not only is it a wonder that structural, electrical, and thermal systems behave in a comparable manner, but this is the reason why we can use the same finite element solver to solve multi-physics applications.